equanimity. Tell us a little bit about the singer. Um, and yeah. you were in the first segment about the idea of the oneness of all things and how you came about with this music. Yeah, this was the first song that I wrote, actually. And I started, started with that because I thought that would be the hardest song for me to write. Because mm -hmm. I thought, OK, I, thinking about loving kindness, Immediately, I have a certain feeling, I have a certain sound in my head. I, I, can, I, I know I can compose music about love. Thinking about compassion, immediately ideas, sounds come to my head. I, I know I can, I know music can express co compassion. Thinking about joy, no problem. Music can express joy and happiness. But equanimity, you know, it's such an intellectual idea, equanimity, the, the idea that all things are one. How can you explain, you know, it's such a difficult thing to express with music. Have you ever heard a, a, a song about equanimity? Or, yeah. You know, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, how do you do that? You know, it's, 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 it's not sad, happy, or, or depressed, or or excited it's not it's not about the chasing it's not about fire it's not about water it's not about you know all those things are easy to to invoke with music with sound but equanimity i mean you have to be a saint to really live really live equanimity you, you have to be on the level of a saint and to meditate on it it's a lot of intellectual ideas of thinking how all things really are one, even though they don't seem like one, you know that deeply on the inner level, on the deep, deep level, all things are one. How can you, do, you know, I thought this is gonna be the hardest thing for me hmm. to compose. So I decided I'm gonna start with the hardest. And I reached out to my friend and collaborator, Hirokazu Kosaka, who is a Zen Buddhist priest. And he told me, yes, we have this, in Sanskrit it's called um, Epeka, Epeka, Upeka, Upeka. He said, yes, we have Upeka in Zen Buddhism, in Japanese Zen Buddhism. And I suggest that you come to my dojo where we shoot an arrow. He's a Zen Buddhist priest who specializes in shooting an arrow as a, as a, as a Buddhist practice. And he said, before we practice, we always chant. And after we practice, we always chant. And I'd like you to hear that chant. And I come there to the dojo and his students are waiting for him. They're cleaning the floor, they're cleaning the floor, making it really nice and clean. And then they're all standing outside and waiting for the great master who is in his 70s to arrive. And he arrives in a, in a car and they're all rushing to help him. And he's, he's taking out a big, big gong, a bell, a bell that he brought from Japan, from his monastery where his family have been for 700 years, Buddhist practitioners in Japan. He brought that bell, which he normally doesn't bring because he wanted me to hear it. Mm. And he started the whole chanting with playing the bell, this huge bell that sounds like a big gong. And it's just an enchanting sound. It just, it's a sound that brings you right to the present. And you, it takes away all your thoughts and it takes away you. You disappears. When you hear that bell, you disappears. And it makes it so much easier to be in that place that all things are one. When you really hear that sound, the sound it conquers all your thoughts, mm. all the divisions. And then after the, the bell, which I recorded, so I, I, had, my record, I had my recorded gear there. Oh, I brought my right. recorded gear and I recorded him playing the, the bell and then they start chanting and it turned out that they chant the Heart Sutra. The Heart Sutra is an essential sutra in Buddhism and it's the core sutra and it talks about everything is gone, everything is gone, everything is, everything is, you're beyond all things, all things go are gone. And they chant that and I recorded that and I felt, you know, that is, that's gonna be the core of the song, Equanimity. Mm -hmm. And I took it to my studio and I start composing string orchestra music 
with featuring the cello, violins mm. and violas, playing around those monks chanting. And you know, the monks when they chanted, it's they chanted very monotonically. It's one one note, which is again oneness. They chant in one note. It's all the time. It sounds like something you know, like. Whatever the words, I'm not doing the correct words, but I'm just demonstrating how it's one note. And, yeah, and it's very, it's very monotonic, and it's very hypnotic, and it's very meditative and con contemplative. Mm -hmm. But I heard a string orchestra playing around that one note mm. and, and reaching that one note and adding to it without covering it, but supporting it, accompanying it. And it became like a film music. Uh, it became very cinematic. You know, you, you hear this music and it's like you are, you're rising up to the mountains in Tibet on your way to a big temple, you know, something like that, a journey. And, and then there's a solo cello and then the singer comes in chanting the mantra Om Shanti Om. You know, we were thinking what, what mantra we're gonna choose for equanimity, for all things are one. And Dr. Gold suggested Om Shanti Om because mm -hmm. Om is the one sound that holds all things. So Om, and then Shanti means peace. Mm -hmm. Because when, you, when, you're in a point, when you are in a point of oneness, of equanimity, there is peace. There's never war. <laughs> There's never fighting when you are in that place. So it implies sh Shanti comes right away. So Om, Shanti, Om. And then I had to write a, the theme for the singer mm -hmm. to sing. And I wrote a melody for her, a very mm -hmm. simple melody, something like... Uh, um, and then I added the children choir chanting Om Shanti Om and the cello, the cello solo and the string orchestra and the bells and the monks chanting in Sanskrit, the, the Japanese Zen archers uh, chanting in, in, Jap in, in Sanskrit. And it became a very thick, very complex track. It's the most, it's the most deep and more, most uh, challenging musically. Uh, it's the one track that doesn't sound like a pop song or like a Kirtan song. It sounds more like a, 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 a cinematic soundtrack, you know, like The Last Emperor or right. one of those songs, you know, there's a choir, there's an orchestra, you know, it's, it's a lot. And um, some people, it's their favorite track. Some people, it's interesting, some people, The Joy is their favorite track. Some people... Loving kindness or compassion is their favorite track. It's been really interesting to read since uh, the album came in July. So it's almost half a year. There've been a lot of uh, critics and, and, and reviews written about it and it's all incredible reviews. You could read it on our um, Four Divine States of Mind page on Meta Mindfulness Music. There was excerpts from all the reviews. Everybody just loved that, but it's so interesting how different people have their f different, because uh, each song is different style, it's different musical style. Um, so um, equanimity is, is the favorite for the people who really um, seek a very deep and contemplative, complex kind of music. That, that's the track for them. Yeah. And appropriately so, you know, and it's funny, I started the whole album from the end, you know, this, this is the end. But the reason why I started is just because I thought it's gonna take me so long, it's gonna take me so much research, it would take me so much trying and trying and I, I didn't think I could do it quickly. Mm. And uh, I think I was right because I, 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 it took me longer to compose that then, you know, the other three came, I work, I, I work the same amount of time orchestrating and producing and, and recording them, but inventing the melody and coming up with a, 
the, the, the song, um, loving kindness, compassion, and joy came quickly within a few hours. And equanimity took a few weeks. Took I'm, I'm laughing only because it seems like in meditation practice, equanimity is the hardest to come by. And what's so interesting is even the way in which you composed it was to like find the oneness and like find the knitting around by like merging the music around the the central ideas from this gong and then the people <laughs> chanting and so there was just kind of oneness and solidity that just kind of happened by when you listen to it. I mean I just think even the way that you composed it is related to the concept of <laughs> Very, very true. Yeah, it's very true. The, the path was the goal and the goal was the path. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. I can't wait to listen to um, the music. You can go to, um, it's everywhere, but just yeah, keep of, of mind. Of mind. And um, if you want to um, go and type in um, hashtag for divine practices, hashtag, and have your cinematic performance um, of how this, how you relate to the music. And do you want to hear from people in terms of what, what their favorite song is? Yeah, I would love to hear from people. If they could write an email, my email is Yuval, Y-U-V-A-L, at Yuval Ron Music. Uh, you could uh, look me up on Facebook or Instagram. You could look uh, up Meta Mindfulness Music. You can write an email to Meta Mindfulness Music, the, the record company. They will forward it to me. And uh, last, I wanted to mention that this Sunday, December 6th, I'm teaching a workshop on InsightTimer.com about the four divine states of mind. There's two se uh, four sessions. Each time I'm going to teach people how to sing, how to chant the actual song from the album. So this Sunday at 11 a.m. PST, Pacific Time, there's a workshop, and I think it's free. Uh, it's on InsightTimer.com, live events, the live, live stream events on InsightTimer.com, Sunday, December 6th, uh, 11 a.m., and you could uh, join me there for a, a free workshop on how to sing the loving kindness Sanskrit mantra chanting. And, and um, next session, I think it's um, next month, it's going to be the compassion. And then the following month is going to be the joy. And the fourth month would be the, the uh, equanimity. And I will give people the music. I will have the music notes and I will have the words written in English transliteration. We're going to listen to the recording of those great singers that sang it on the recording. Then we're going to learn how to sing it ourselves. We're going to chant it, and then people could just use it in their own. I audience. love it. Online kirtan. Okay. Thank, <laughs> Thank goodness, Zoom. Like it's, it's so amazing what people are doing with music. And, I mean, it's inspiring all these creative ways to share. I would never have thought of doing kirtan online. Um, but you can, um, in, uh, insighttimer.com, December 6th at 11 a.m. Thank you so much. It's always such a joy to talk to you. My pleasure, CJ. Great to have you in this world. This is, <laughs> you're adding so much beauty and harmony and good vibrations. So I'm grateful for your show and all the work you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.